I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications. Because he has inclined his ear to me. Therefore, I will call upon him as long as I live. The pains of death surrounded me, and the pangs of Sheol laid hold of me. I found trouble and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I implore you, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Yes, our God is merciful. The Lord preserves the simple. I was brought low and he saved me. Return to your rest, O oh my soul. For the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believe, therefore, and I spoke. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits toward me? I will take up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord now in the presence of all of his people. Precious, precious, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Good morning. Good morning. I greet you in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. As we now cross the threshold to this celebration of life for one Christopher Columbus Eaton Jr. And the program does say celebration of life. It didn't say funeral. It said celebration of life. So we have come to celebrate that life, amen? Oh, y'all don't sound like so you're celebrating to me. Oh, we can celebrate better than that. We can give God some praise for a life well lived. For one that's gone on to be with the Lord. Amen, amen. Let us invite the Lord into our service. Lord God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to minister to family and friends of sister, brother, Christopher Eaton. Lord, we invite your presence with us that you would come into this service and have your own way. Have your way with every aspect of this service that someone would be ministered to on today. Someone would be built up and edified. Someone would be encouraged. Someone would feel your compassion. And through it all, Lord, we're praying that you will be glorified. So be with us, Lord, in every aspect of this service as we aim to minister to this family. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say amen. 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 Uh, uh, we are going to call on uh, Jerome Gary. Going to ask him to come now and minister to the family in song. Amen. Amen. Yes, you can go to the mic to my left and to your right. Praise the Lord. Condolences again to the family. Um, I hope this little short song will be some consolation to you. Um, I think if Brother Chris could.
tell you this, he would say, I'm free, praise the Lord, I'm free, no longer bound, no more chains holding me, my soul is resting, it's such a blessing, praise the Lord, hallelujah, I'm free. You say, I'm free, praise the Lord, I'm free, no longer bound, no more pain holding me, my soul is resting, oh, what a blessing, praise the Lord, hallelujah, praise the Lord, hallelujah, praise the Lord, hallelujah, I'm free. Amen. 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 Actually, we all ought to be a little envious of, of Christopher because he's gone on ahead of us and he's free. Amen. Amen. Let us give God's uh, hand praise for our brother Jerome Gary ministering to us in his song. Let's go ahead and give the Lord a hand praise. Amen. Amen. At this time, the next two items on our, actually three items on our um, program is for our chairman of our deacon's ministry, Deacon Harold Gilliard, to come and render the reading of the Old Testament as well as the New Testament scripture. And after that, we're going to have uh, Deacon Clarence Thompson to come, and he's going to minister to the family in prayer. Amen. Some, I thought somebody would say amen. Yeah, there we go. Good morning. May God bless you. On behalf of uh, my wife, Deacon Aaron Gilliard, and our Deacon Board and the entire church family, including our pastor, we extend our heartfelt sympathy to the Eaton family and all the family members. As I reflect back over the years, the Eaton family historically has been very instrumental in this church. Most of them sit over to my right over there. Brother Cook's mother and others down through the years, they really support this church. And looking around, the offsprings are here this morning too. When they were here, they did the same. God bless you for your efforts, and we're going to keep you in our prayers. And so be strong, and God is with you. The Old Testament is coming from Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, entitled Everything Has a Time. Everything has its time. To everything, there is a season, a time of every purpose on the heaven, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck up what has been planted, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, a time to build up, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, a time to gather stones, a time to embrace, a time to refrain from embracing, a time to gain, a time to lose, a time to keep, a time to throw away a time to tear, a time to sow, a time to keep silent, a time to speak, a time to love, a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. 
The New Testament reading is coming from John, the 14th chapter, the first through the seventh verse. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in me, in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. May God bless the reading of his word. To God be the glory, to God be the glory, to God be the glory for the things he has done. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Giving honor to God and praises to my Savior, Jesus Christ, for offering comfort to this family, to this group, as you have heard from Ecclesiastics, as a kid, I said, it's clear. I didn't say it's Ecclesiastic. That was a time to, to get started. And you know, I learned about God. And God gave us a law. He talks about a neighbor. There's someone near to you. I say to you and the family, look north, look east, look west, and look south. And look to your neighbor and say, God loves you, and I love you too. And that's what comes from the spirit of Brother Eden. For we know the spirit is what leads us to God. I didn't come here to sing. I didn't come here to preach. I came here to offer comfort in words with prayer. I ask that you pray with me and pray for me in your hearts, minds, and spirits, and souls. Let us now pray. Gracious, most merciful, Heavenly Father, that sits, sits mighty, mighty high, but looks low down upon us all. We gather to comfort this family, to say glory to you, Heavenly Father, for you loved us so much, Heavenly Father, that you sent your love to us in your son, Jesus Christ. And we thank you for the comforter, Heavenly Father, for he was the true comforter and he left his spirit to comfort us, Heavenly Father. So this day we're calling upon that spirit to come into the midst and flow from heart to heart and breast to breast, from neighbor to neighbor, and comfort them, Heavenly Father, for truly he is the comforter, Heavenly Father, for he turned water into wine, 
And that was a miracle, Heavenly Father. He fed the multitude, coming from a young boy, Heavenly Father. He fed the multitude with bread, the bread of life, and just a few fish, Heavenly Father. He fed them. And that was suffice, Heavenly Father. And then, Heavenly Father, he didn't stop there. He continued to show his love. He showed his love by giving sight to the blind, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, he, he opened up the eyes of us, Heavenly Father, for all of us to see him, Heavenly Father. We came into a world of darkness and the light shined, Heavenly Father. So we thank you. Thank you for that light, Heavenly Father. And Heavenly Father, your son went a little further, Heavenly Father, for he healed the cripple and the lame, Heavenly Father. He touched him, Heavenly Father. And that was enough, Heavenly Father. And just a touch of the hem of his garment is enough. So we thank you for the love that your son came and gave, Heavenly Father. And as he left, Heavenly Father, he left us with his spirit. The spirit of comfort, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we need that comfort right here in this facility, Heavenly Father. Brother Eaton has gone. His time has come and gone, Heavenly Father. But Heavenly Father, we know that his spirit lives on with the love that he gave, Heavenly Father. His spirit is still here, Heavenly Father. His love was here as a brother, Heavenly Father. His love was here as a husband, Heavenly Father. His love was here as a father to his children, Heavenly Father. His love was here as a neighbor. And everyone is near to us and our neighbor, Heavenly Father. So we thank you for neighbors, Heavenly Father. We say thank for the love and the comfort that Jesus Christ gave us. Allow us in the spirit of Brother Eaton to live on as we continue to share love with our neighbors, Heavenly Father. Bless us. And we will and shall be blessed. Give us love abundantly that we might be able to give it to one another as a neighbor. Heavenly Father, I pray to thee, Heavenly Father, in the name of my Savior Jesus Christ, I say amen to the Heavenly Father. Amen for the comfort and Savior and Son Jesus Christ. And amen for the Holy, Holy comforting spirit of Jesus Christ. I say amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you so much, Deacon Thompson, for that heartfelt prayer. And thank you, Deacon Gilead, for uh, rendering the reading of our scriptures. Amen. At this time, we're going to be ministered to in song. Amen. And we're going to call on Sister Gwendolyn King to come now and minister to us in song. And afterwards, uh, Brother Lincoln Ross is going to minister to us instrumentally. Amen. Amen. Feel like I'm the only one who's saying amen this morning. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. <laughs> to um, my birthday buddy, Sister Josephine Holland, Trustee John Holland, to uh, Musette. Quail, Lincoln, and the rest of the family, Eden, all in the family, you have my deepest sympathy. We'll do, try to do a little bit of Rough Side of the Mountain. Oh, Lord, Lord, I'm striving, trying to make it through this barren land. But as I go, from day to day, I can hear my Savior say, trust me, child, and come on out, hold your hand. And I'm coming up on the rough side of the mountain, and I've got to hold to God, his powerful hand, and I'm coming up 
on the rough side of the mountain and I'm doing my best to make it in I'm coming up Lord I'm coming up Lord although my burdens sometimes they press me down but if I can only keep the faith I'll have strength just to run this race oh I'm looking for my my story crown oh I'm coming up on the rough side oh And I must hold on to God, His powerful hand. And I'm coming up on the rough side of the mountain. And I'm doing my best to make it in. This old race will soon be over, and then there'll be no more race for me to run. But I've got to stand before God's throne, or my heart is will be gone. Oh, I'll hear my Savior say, Welcome home, whoa, and I'm coming up on the rough side of the mountain, but I must go home to God, his powerful hand, and I'm
Let's put those hands together and give God some praise for Brother Ross playing for us instrumentally and Sister Gwendolyn King ministering to us in song. Amen, amen. And at this time, I'm going to ask Trustee Darlene Perry. She'll come now and render the reading of the acknowledgments. Amen. Amen. She's doing double duty. She's turning that camera around, and monitoring and managing it, and going to minister to the family also in the reading of the acknowledgments and a statement from the church. Amen. Good morning, family. I'll be reading the cards and the acknowledgments. Thinking of you with sympathy. To let, to, let, to let you know that warm thoughts are with you in your sorrow, to bring you comfort for today and courage for tomorrow. Many condolences, Cecilia Golson, 2024. In the loss of your husband, there are no words to take away sadness. When you're lost, when you lose someone you love. Always remember you are cared for. You have friends and family that will always stand by your side. You are a strong person and can make it through anything. With heartfelt sympathy, the Hedge Path family. First Rise of Mount Zion Baptist Church, home going service for Christopher Eaton. Monday, April the 15th, 2024. Praise be to God and Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, for Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us all in our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we receive from God. Second Corinthians, Chapter 1, verse 3 through 4. The members of First Rise of Mount Zion Baptist Church were saddened to hear the passing of Brother Christopher Eaton. We extend our prayers, love, and heartfelt sympathy to you and the family during this time of sadness. To Sister Annie Mae Eaton, Sister Josephine Holland, Trustee Emeritus John Holland, Brother John C. and Gregory Holland, Allow the memories that your loved one leaves behind to lift your spirits. Allow the joy to surround you and uplift you today in the days to come. Hold those memories close to your heart as God holds you close to his. God would give you the comfort that you need during this time of healing. Trust God to be your encouragement and he will pour out his compassion in your time of need. The First Rounds of Mount Zion family cares for you, and we are here to support and assist you in whatever we can do. As you go through this time of bereavement, if we, your church family, can be of any assistance to you, don't hesitate to contact us. Prayerfully submitted on behalf of First Rounds of Mount Zion Baptist Church, Reverend Orrin W. Young. Let the church say amen. 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 Thank you, Trustee Perry, for reading those acknowledgments and the letter of comfort from the church. Uh, at this time, some of you are going to get to participate in the program with your reflections. The family has asked me to ask three people, uh, three people, to come to the microphone to your right and to my left at this time to give reflections. I see one. Do we have any others? Now is the time to come and minister to the family with some uplifting experiences that you shared with Brother Christopher Eaton. Is there another? I see a second. Is there a third? Is there a third? That's the third there? Okay, thank you very much. Three folks are coming. Amen, amen. And while they are coming, I um, want to thank everybody for wearing their mask. Amen. There are a couple people that have not um, 
that do, does not have their mask on, we'd ask that you put your mask on. As a matter of fact, Saturday before last, I tested positive for COVID and tested uh, negative on this past Saturday. So it's still out there, amen? And 3.4% of the nation that test end up with COVID. It's on a decline, but it's not gone yet. So let us uh, continue to wear a mask and we thank you for your cooperation. Amen. 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 Go right ahead. Good morning, church and family. I didn't prepare anything today, but Chris has been a part of my life since I elementary school. Mm -hmm. And you know, they always say just because you're not blood, that doesn't make you family. He helped raise me. He gave me a sister. I love her so much. Lorna, family members, brothers, and everyone. I just want to reminisce a little bit. Um, we lived on C Street, Southeast, and Merlin Avenue, Northeast. Every time I talk to him, he said, you look just like your mother. So thanks to my sister, maybe a couple weeks ago, I was able to say my last words to him. Um, she FaceTimed me. And we had a little talk and everything. He used to pick us up in the car, always had the nicest car, Cadillacs, take us everywhere we wanted to go, trips, helped us out, helped raise us. He was just a really good person, played those bongos, dance, tap dance. He did it all. I just love him so much. And we kind of fell apart, and I didn't see him a lot through my adult years, but... I just had to give him thanks a couple weeks ago because he did so much to help me and my sisters and my family grow up. And it's just so many of us that he was a part of our lives, like the exes, the present and everybody. He was just so special to me. And I didn't prepare it and my mom is gone. She's been gone for like 14 years. Mm -hmm. And I think she just came into me today and said, Wanda, I'm gonna need you to get up there and speak. Mm -hmm. because um, my sisters are not here, but he just did so much for us. And, you know, I wasn't his biological father, I mean, daughter, but he just meant a lot to me. So mm -hmm. I just had to get up and talk and I love him and I'm gonna miss him. That's all right, amen. Thank you, thank you. Praise the Lord, saints. Hallelujah. My name is Avery Holland, and uh, two minutes of never going to be enough time for me to tell you how much my uncle meant to me. I mean, ever since we were kids, I think uh, right at this point, I think I may be the oldest grand grandchild right now. I am. Okay. <laughs> Well, anyway, the young lady mentioned about Uncle Chris having the nice cars and this, that, and the other, and uh, he blessed me uh, when I graduated from high school and let me drive his 1975 Eldorado. Mm -hmm. And he used to come past the house and help me train for my uh, amateur fights. Mm -hmm. Chris, uh, Uncle Chris was the man. Uh, a lot of people had a lot of heroes, but Uncle Chris was my hero because he was so talented. He could box, mm -hmm. he could dance, he could do all you know the instruments, and he was just a great guy. Great guy to know, great person to be around. Me and my brother Anthony, we used to go over to the house and watch fights with him. Remember that, May? So uh, you know he was just a good person to be around, and I'm going to miss him greatly. Thank you. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Well, I'm his youngest son, Andre, and um, I just want to thank everybody for coming. I didn't prepare anything. His sisters, his brothers, my sisters, his aunts, everybody. Just want to say thank you. And um, my dad was someone special to me. My dad is what he'll always be. My dad was dead through thick and thin. He was my dad until the end. My dad is someone that I will always treasure and no abuse but selfish pleasure. 
And now I know his legacy will last to the end because it's going to live through me because I'm his twin. Mm -hmm. And that came straight from the heart, but I like to thank everybody. And my dad wouldn't want everybody to be sad. My sister Lorna, we red ones in the group. Um, Brother Chris, Tisha, my, my kids, my fiance, Uncle Papa. I, it's, everybody think I'm going to cry, but I ain't going to cry. I'm not going to cry because my dad's been not, not in pain no more. And we all want to see him again when we get there. Meet you at the crossroads. But um, his laugh is definitely going to live through me. And thank you. Thanks for having me. Amen. Amen. So we want to thank the son that came and the, was the oldest nephew, was it? Oldest nephew and, um, and the not biological daughter that came also. Amen. Amen. We thank you for coming to minister to the family in the way that you did. Amen. Now it's time for us to read the obituary. And um, if I had to pronounce that name the way it appears, <laughs> see, it was he messing with you? Yeah. That's what. Uh huh. <laughs> Come on and share the obituary with us. Amen. And it's mainly for those that are on Zoom and YouTube that okay. you are presenting. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Good morning, family. It is a great honor to read this obituary this morning. So Christopher Columbus Eaton Jr., son of the late Christopher and Sally Eaton, was born on April 19, 1938 in Washington, D.C. He was welcomed into the arms of the Heavenly Father on April 7, 2024. Chris accepted Christ as his Lord and Savior at an early age. He was baptized at Morning Star Church of God in Christ in Washington, D.C. Although Chris was not physically able to attend church in person, he remained faithful to God by watching religious programs from all denominations. Chris attended Phelps Vocational High School. His first job was at DC General Hospital and he later became a mechanic. He was a stylish dresser and with his wife, they established the Chris Ann and Company Shop. They sold the latest styles of shoes, purses, and clothes. He was a jokester and had a great zest for life. His love for laughter prompted him to record a comedy album. He was also an avid tap dancer, and he could dance circles around everyone except his mama. Her, he and his mother would compete with each other on the dance floor, and she won every time. <laughs> he was a great athlete and won the Golden Glove Championship for the lightweight division. He leaves to cherish his memory, his loving wife, Annie Mae Gary Eaton, his four children, Minister Lorna Christine Eaton, Christopher Eaton III, Latrice Eaton, and Andre Sims. One stepson, Marcus Gary, four siblings, Josephine Holland, John, Calvin Eaton, Juliet Jones, and Musette Eaton Lynch. 15 grandchildren and 22 great-grandchildren, mm -hmm. and a host of nieces, nephews, cousins, and friends. He is preceded in death by three siblings, Curtis Eaton, Susie Lane, and Fanny Eaton, and two grandsons, Kevin Eaton and Davon Robinson. Recognition and gratitude is expressed to the Hospice Gilcrest team and Reverend Young, for their enduring love, support, and bedside services. Thank you very much.
Amen, amen. Thank you so much, Sister Nick Quayle Nguyen. Amen, amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, Sister, before I come with some words of encouragement uh, from the Lord, Sister Gwendolyn King is going to come and minister to the family again in song. Why should my heart be lonely? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home? When Jesus is my portion, a constant friend is he. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches over me. Let not your heart be troubled. His tender words I hear. And resting on his goodness, I lose my doubts and fears. Though by the path he leadeth, but one step, one step I may take. His eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches over me. You see, I sing, I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. Oh, his eye, my God's eye, his eye is on the sparrow. And I know, do you know, he watches over you and me. You see, I sing, I sing because I'm happy. Yes, I sing because I'm free. Oh, his eye. My God's eye, his eye is on the sparrow. And I know, do you know, he watches over oh, you and me. Don't you know that I sing because I'm happy. Well, you know that I sing because I'm free. Oh, his eye, God's eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches over me. Well, you know that I sing because I'm happy. Well, you know that I sing because I'm free. Oh, his eyes, God's eyes, his eyes is on the sparrow. And I know he watches over me. 
Well, you know that I sing because I'm happy. Well, you know that I sing because I'm free. Oh, his eye, God's eye, his eye is on the sparrow. And I know, do you know, I know, do you know, he watches, my God watches, he watches over you and me. Amen, amen. She asked, does anybody know that he watches over you and me? Does anybody know? She's waiting on the answer. Does anybody know that he watches over you and me? If you know that he watches over you and me, then let's give God some praise on this morning. Amen, amen. I won't be before you long. I have a word of encouragement that comes from the 23rd Psalm. The 23rd Psalm. And I will be reading it from the New King James Version. And it reads this way. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shallow death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely, somebody say surely. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. I want to share with you briefly from the thought, goodness and mercy. Goodness and mercy. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for your presence with us today. We thank you, Lord, for an opportunity to minister to this word, minister your word to this family. So, Lord, we Pray that your word will go forth and accomplish its intended purpose and not return unto your void. And I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be found acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Goodness and mercy. I have known Christopher Eaton for a good number of years. But it was a while before I learned that, after even knowing him, it was a while after that, that I learned that he was raised up here in First Rising by his mother. And I met Christopher years ago. I don't even know how many it was, May, but it was years ago. Uh, through my financial service practice, I inherited he and his family as clients. And I quickly learned that he was a provider. I thought somebody might say amen right there. I got three or four people. That's, that, that you, you're working on it. You're working on it. It was as if he would think ahead and make provisions. Christopher didn't just envision the provisions. He would make plans so that the plans would become a reality. Christopher planned to be a good husband. Obviously, he planned to be a good husband and take care of his wife. And it started out that way, but by a twist of fate, May ended up taking care of Christopher, amen? When we take our wedding vows, we agree to take care of our spouses through sickness and in health, amen? And Christopher was about 
also about helping people. He, I understand, reached into his pocket to help some family members who were sick down south. And that is just a reflection of a kind heart. Hey, where your treasure is, your heart will be also. Amen. Amen. While many are reaching their hand out, Christopher would be reaching his hand in his pocket to help somebody. All too often, people have not matured in their giving as they have with their receiving. Christopher's kindness didn't stop there. His family meant the world to him. Christopher would go out of his way to make sure his family had what they needed and some of the desires of their heart. To make things happen, Christopher would work all kinds of odd jobs to make it happen. If nothing else, he made sure that there was food on the table. Amen. Chances are, Christopher knew that the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. So he wanted that same spirit within his children. The Bible says to bring up the children in the way that they should go, and when they get old, they shall not depart from it. That is a sign of a nurturing spirit. You might recall how Christopher liked to watch old movies on the TV. You might remember how he worked out at Finley's gym and also his boxing career. Some of you are going to remember uh, the dancing competitions that he and his mother used to have, amen? And some are going to remember how he would split your sides when he would begin to tell jokes. But most importantly, are you going to remember how his life was an expression of his faith. What you believe on the inside comes out on the outside. Thus far, you have heard of a sharing, caring, and giving person. Amen? Well, don't stop amen and now. Christopher didn't let his disability stop him from growing in his faith that he acquired at an early age. He made a point to watch worship service on television and would even invite and welcome folks of different religious affiliations into his home so he could hear the word of God. Christopher put his faith on display by being there, by being there for his wife, being there for his children, and other family members and friends that he cared about. So it should be apparent that Christopher showed his goodness and his mercy, amen? The goodness and mercy that he received from the Lord. Another such, such person went from being a shepherd boy to one who shepherded God's people by the name of King David. It was, or it has been said, that, that David, the one who was after God's own heart, wrote at least 75 of the 150 Psalms. The Psalms' primary purpose was to produce praise and worship. They convey the acts of God in history and speak of the joy and pains of the people who experience God's presence. The scope of the Psalms express both the horizontal and vertical realities. So of course, horizontal goes this way and vertical goes that way and that makes a what? Uh, some, I heard somebody say a cross, amen. They express the trials Complaints in God's intervention into life, the victories in this life and the life to come. Psalm 23, probably one of the most familiar of the Psalms, communicates 
David's confidence in God, which stems from the faithfulness of God. David uses the imagery of the shepherd and the sheep to illustrate his relationship with God. In this psalm, we see provisions. In this psalm, we see the presence. We also see the protection of the great shepherd. Did you hear the provisions of the great shepherd? Well, hold on, I'm going to tell you. David said in verses 1 through 3, The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Did you hear the provisions? David had the ability, he had the means and resources to shepherd his father's sheep, to lead them. He had to lead them off the beaten path to, to greener grass and quieter waters. And he had to provide food and water for the sheep. And you know, um, if not, let me tell you that sheep don't like to lie down when they're hungry. And they don't drink from rushing waters. When people are depressed, they won't eat or drink. Amen. You can have confidence, though, that God is a heart fixer and a mind regulator. Are you glad about that today? He does this because of his honor. He doesn't run at the sign of trouble. He loves his sheep. But remember, this psalm has horizontal and vertical realities. My God is capable of taking care of you. If you've ever been through anything, you know what I'm talking about. Amen? Oh, he might have been your banker when you were broke. He might have been your heart fixer when your relationship was raggedy. He might have been your healer when you were sick and to provide you with another job when you got a pink slip. The Lord Jesus will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. He will give you rest. He will refresh and restore your soul. He has the resources. He has the resources to provide all your needs. You have to know him for yourself, though. Amen. You have to trust and never doubt that he will surely bring you out. Uh, so the great shepherd is a provider. But not only that, the great shepherd is a protector. David says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for your you are with me. Your rod and staff, they comfort me. The protector, the protector, the shepherd would inspect the sheep every day to check for bruises, to check for cuts, to check for sicknesses, to check for weariness, and go after those who have gone astray. The shepherd knows his sheep by name, and they follow him. And I'm told that you can't herd sheep. Sheep follow. Those whose confidence in Jesus Christ will follow Jesus and obey his word, not because, not because they have to, but because they want to. Amen. Isaiah 53 and 6 reminds us, all we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way. At some point in time, we all have gone astray. Amen and gone our own way. And sheep, I don't know if you know, the sheep are not the brightest animals. Sheep will look for greener grass, and they'll look for still waters. They're vulnerable. They're vulnerable out there on their own. They may find themselves in trouble. <laughs> but Jesus said a, a good shepherd will leave the 99 sheep to go after the one that is lost and lead him into the path of a right relationship with the shepherd. Sometimes we act just like those sheep, amen? 
We go astray looking for greener grass in the world. And all we find is confusion, chaos, and conflict out there doing our own thing. But aren't you glad that he's not going to give up on you? He ain't going to give up on me. Just like the father ne never gave up on the people of Israel when they would go and turn toward their own way. Jesus will never give up on you. Jesus will heal your soul and guide you into a right relationship with him. He's an ever-present help in the time of trouble. Does anybody know that he's an ever-present help in the time of trouble? That he is the great shepherd. And he's an ever-present protector. But he has a plan. He has a plan. In verse 6, David says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A good shepherd is not a hired hand. Hired hands will run at the first sign of trouble and leave the sheep. David has provided for the sheep. He has protected the sheep. He calls them all by name. He cares for the sheep. He has a relationship with them. This gives the, the sheep assurance and hope in their future. In their minds, in the minds of the sheep, they can rest assured that David is the man. He's got this because he's done all, he's done right by God's sheep. He's assured goodness and mercy is going to follow them all the days of their lives. But he switches. He switches to that heavenly reality with the confidence that he's going to live in the house of the Lord forever. He knows that God is good and his mercy endures to all generations. When someone has mercy on you, they withhold from you what you deserve. David didn't always make wise decisions himself. And some things that were not pleasing in the sight of God. He did some things that just displeased God. But David said in Psalm 51, For God had created in him a clean heart and to renew a steadfast spirit within him. That's why David was said to be a man after God's own heart. It was his desire to be about the plan of God. You, me, Lottie, Dottie, and everybody have been selfish from time to time. Done things that were contrary to the word of God and not pleasing in his sight. But he wants us to know there is a plan. A plan for our future. He wants us to know if we believe in his plan and ask for forgiveness that he will create in us a clean heart and renew a steadfast spirit within us. Christopher believed in the Lord's plan, and it was evident in the way he shepherded his children. It was evident in the way that he led them in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. They had the blessed assurance and confidence that if they believe in Jesus, if they gave themselves away to help others, they would find favor with the Lord and dwell in his house forever. Not an earthly house, but a, a heavenly house not made by hands. Jesus said he's going to prepare a place for us. So where he is, there we will be also. He was looking ahead. He was a visionary. He was a planner. I should say he is because he's still living. Amen. And back in Jesus' day, they had this law. Started out with 10, and they added to it, ended up with 613 laws. And they had to make animal sacrifices for the forgiveness of their sins uh, if they broke any of that law. See, there was, a, a, there was a demand for justice. God demands justice, and the animal had to be sacrificed without spot or wrinkle. It had to be a perfect sacrifice. It was the plan of God. It was the plan of God for his only begotten son 
to go to the cross and suffer, bleed, and die for your sins and mine. And they took him off of that cross and put him in a borrowed tomb. And he stayed there all day Friday. He stayed there all day Saturday. But early, early on Sunday morning, on the third day, he got up with all power in his hands so that sin would no longer have dominion over you and no longer would sin have dominion over me. Oh, death, oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? Do you know that we have the victory in Jesus? Do you know that we have the victory in the plan of Jesus? Do you know that he is our provider, that he is our protector, he's an ever-present help in a time of trouble, and that he has a plan for you and me to give us a right relationship with God? The, the songwriter said, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story. Is this your story? Have you accepted the plan? But guess what? The plan doesn't end there. Because in, in 1 Thessalonians, it says that Jesus is coming back. And that the dead in Christ, like Christopher Eaton, is going to meet him in the air. And all who are alive and remain are going to be caught up. And they're going to be caught up in the air and go off to the land of no more. Where there's no more pain where there's no more suffering, where there's no more sickness, where there's no more death, and there's no more weeping eyes. But it's also the land of so, some more, where there's just going to be joy, some more joy, and everlasting joy, and eternal joy, and indispensable joy that's never going to run out, that we're going to have for the Lord. Amen, amen. Or is anybody in here going to experience that joy and that heavenly reality? Yes, he's coming back. Yes, he is coming back. Ain't he all right? Won't he do it for you? Any believers in the house today? Has everybody accepted the Lord's plans in their heart? When I think of his goodness and all he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Anybody going to help me thank him today? Thank you, Lord, for your forgiveness. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever shall believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. If you believe that today, stand to your feet all over the church. Because Christopher called us together. He called together this family gathering. So that if there's anybody in our presence that know him not, not in the pardoning of their sins, never been baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, never been a member of a church today, Christopher wants me to let you know that he is your example. Amen? He is your example because he accepted Christ at an early age and joined the church and was raised in this church. So he is your example. But it didn't originate with him. It started with Christ. Christ was his example. And as a result, Christopher is your example. Amen? Amen. So you can connect with First Rise and Mount Zion Baptist Church as a candidate for baptism. But not only that, if you've been a member of a church before and it's not convenient for you to attend that church, you can come to us by way of letter. Or you can come based on your Christian experience. If you were once a member of First Rising and you want to reconnect, if you want to reconnect, you can come and renew your covenant with First Rising. And we'll bring you up in the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. So the invitation is gone out. Is there anyone 
in person on Zoom or YouTube that wants to accept one of those invitations today. If so, if you're in person, step out in the aisle. Come and give your hand to the deacon and tell them you too want to be saved. Did you want to connect or reconnect with Christ? Is there one? Won't you come? And those of you that are on Zion, um, excuse me, on online, take down this telephone number, uh, 202-289-4480. Take down that telephone number and call the church and tell them that you want to connect with First Rise of Mount Zion Baptist Church. If you can navigate your way to our website, www.firstrising.org, you can go there. When you get to the home page, there will be a link for church membership. Give us your contact information, and I will contact you. Or under that, it will be another link if you want a special prayer. Is there one? Is there one? Is there one? Brother Ross, can you play a little something instrumentally or just play the same thing that you played a few moments ago? Amen. 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 Is there one? All who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Amen. And some of you are thinking about it. Some of you are thinking about it. And some of you are thinking, well, let me kind of get things in order first. Have you ever had anybody to come and knock on your door to come and visit you and you ain't have the house straight? Have you ever, has that ever happened to anybody? Well, our, sometimes our lives are not straight. And Jesus will come knocking on our heart. And we think we got to get it all straight first before we let him in. But that's not the way it works. When you accept his plan, he gives you his Holy Spirit to enlighten you and stir up the word of God within you so the old things can pass away and all things become new. So is there one? Is there one? Won't you come? Is there one? Seeing none, I trust that we have all born again, baptized believers as that don't have it just in their mind, that they have it in their heart. Amen? Amen. Let us give God some praise as we take our seats. Amen. Amen. Okay. Let's see. Got a couple of housekeeping items before we bring our service to a close. And we're going to ask the homegoing directors if they'll come forward now. And as they're coming, they're going to need volunteers to come and take the flowers out to the hearse. I see three or four that are going to need, we're going to need volunteers for at least three or four of the flowers. And I see the pallbearers already to my left. The pallbearers already to my left and to your right. All right, I'm going to ask if our deacons will come now. And they're going to stop right about at the casket. And as they come, I'm going to ask the pallbearers to follow the deacons. And I'm going to come out of the pulpit and acknowledge the family. And afterwards, we are going to escort like an honorary procession or recession to escort the casket to the hearse. Amen. And, uh, and be sure to, to 
continue to encourage the family. As a matter of fact, we're going to have to do the benediction before we go. And, and also, okay, let's do that now. Amen, amen. But be sure to find out about the memorial service that's going to be in North Carolina. And ask them also if there's going to be a repass. Amen. Amen. All right. For as much as it's pleased the Almighty God in his wise providence to take out of this world unto himself the soul of a husband, father, brother in Christ, Christopher Eaton, he therefore commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, Ashes to ashes, and dust to dust. Can you take some of those flyers, flowers and cross them up for us, if you would, please? Amen. Thank you so much. Now we're going to recess out to the sanctuary after the benediction. Lord God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for the love, the life, and the legacy of Christopher Eaton. We pray, Lord, that you'll continue to comfort this family and pour out your compassion upon them, for we know that you sit high and look low, full of compassion. Heal where there's a need for healing and continue to dry the tear-stained eyes. And now unto him who's able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his glorious throne with exceeding great joy. Unto the all-wise God be all power and dominion, glory and honor, both now and forevermore. Let us all say amen. 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 I apologize for not asking you to stand, but would you please stand and wait till the recessional goes out. Amen. Amen.